Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to go to Norway once again, although this isn't one of the beers that I brought back with me from my recent trip up there. This was one that I treated myself to when I was in Copenhagen at Shiosk last time. So I'll put their link to their Facebook page and their web shop in the description below, as I always do. But for this one, we are going to go back to Oslo and we're revisiting Amundsen Bryggery, who really are making a name for themselves internationally now. And this is a collaboration beer that they did with the Kings County Brewers Collective who are from Brooklyn in New York. It's called the Technicolor Highway. I think a loose, uh, I think this one is like a loose sort of reference to the Rainbow Bridge of uh, of Asgard. Um, but yeah, this one is a double IPA coming in at 8% ABV, so it should be a really quite interesting one, this. And I've had some very positive experiences with Amundsen before, and I think this is the second or third collaboration that I've had that involves the Kings County Brewers Collective. So yeah, it should be a really interesting one and like I say I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery websites the link to my other reviews that I've done from Amundsen and from Kings County Brewers Collective before no doubt it will add some more to both in the fairly near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Norwegian beers that I've reviewed for you and one for all the American beers as well. Those are constantly being added to and this one will appear in both of those. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about the Almond Amundsen Bruggery then. So as I mentioned to you earlier, Amundsen Bruggery are based in Oslo in Norway, the capital city, and the brewery is actually part of the Akerhus Group, which owns a number of bars and restaurants around Oslo. And the main men in this company are Ole Johan, Johan Tollefsen, uh, Bore Jensen, and Tom Erik Andreasen. But the first brewery was part of a gastropub in Stortingsgaten, which is very close to the town hall in Oslo. I've actually been there. The food was great and the beers were awesome as well. They had less Amundsen beers on tap that I, than I actually thought they would, in fairness. But you can go and see the little original brewery room that they had was just very very small and it's just round on the right hand side of the restaurant but very shiny and very fancy looking nonetheless but as I say they started off with a very very small operation and the key man in getting this established was actually Tom Alfred Oimo who had been a home brewer for a number of years but the brewery was expanded and by 2015 they were producing around 200,000 litres of beer per year and they become quite established actually within Norway having opened up a larger brewery in Nydalen. In 2016, though, the parent company purchased the property Halketo Eindom, and with this, they acquired the Björnere Divine, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, 14 property in Halketo, which is in the south of Oslo. And this was turned into a 3,500 square metre brewery, and their brewing began there in late 2016, with the new brewery capacity being around 1 million litres of beer per year. The brewing equipment came from Braucon in Germany, and the canning and bottling lines came from Italy. And the total investment in this site was apparently around 16 million Norwegian. Norwegian Kroner and the managing director of the brewery is Jeffrey Jansen van Vuren and Ma Matthew Thomas and John Hudsons are the others that are involved in the daily running of this brewery and the artwork on the cans is designed by the American Peter John uh, de Villers from what I remember as well so um, yeah a really um, you know really interesting little brewery this one and they really have become very well known throughout Europe like I was drinking these beers during my year in, uh, in Durham in England which was pretty cool as well um, but they seem we, we get a couple of Amundsen beers over here in, in Sweden sometimes they come through the small parties in Seistenbelag but you can get these very very easily in Copenhagen and over in Scotland as well you can get a number of, uh, of the Amundsen beers too but one of the breweries in Norway that are becoming pretty damn you know really quite well known actually for their, uh, their new England IPAs in particular. But that's all you really need to know about the Amundsen Bravery just now. If you want to learn a little bit more, you can follow them on Facebook and Untapped and uh, and also you know Instagram and stuff like that and that'll keep you up to date with all the latest goings on and all the latest uh, re releases actually from them too. They are a very prolific brewery so I would recommend that you do that if you're particularly interested to see in all the new stuff that they're doing. But anyway, on to the second part of the brewery notice then to Kings County Brewers Collective, the American side of the brewery. So Kings County Brewers Collective are based in Brooklyn and they were founded by three guys, Tony Bellis, Zach Kinney and Pete Lengiel. 
So Tony comes from a management background in services and retail, while Zach has a background in advertising and Pete spent a number of years working as a microbiologist. But the three apparently met in home brewing groups. Pete had previously completed a brewing apprenticeship at Brooklyn Brewery and Tony took up the job as a forklift driver and a keg washer at Greenpoint Beer before working his way up to being a lead brewer. But the pair sat down together and wrote up a business plan and then they invited Zach to join them who was one of their classmates at the American Brewers Guild in Vermont and they agreed that by combining their skills they'd form a very, very kind of solid base to create their own brewery. So they settled on the Bushwick, Bushwick area, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, of Brooklyn to set up their brewery which had a very strong brewing heritage owing to the number of German immigrants to the area and they produced around 10%, apparently this area produced around 10% of the American brewed beers in 1900. But in 2016 they signed a lease on their warehouse on Troutman Street and that is where they've been based ever since. They've been gradually building up their capacity and releasing more and more beers from what I gather over the last couple of years too. But like I say, I've only been able to review uh, collaboration beers involving Kings County Brewers Collective but hopefully um, I can get over to the States at some point in the next year or two and uh, visit some of these breweries on the East Coast and on the West Coast that I'd like uh, I'd like to have a go at. It's been about eight or nine years actually since I've been over in America last time. I used to go very regularly with my parents when I was a youngster, but yeah, it's been a very long time since I was over there. I think the last time I was there was 19, so I couldn't drink and that's probably why I didn't go back. But um, yeah, so another really interesting brewery, one that seems to be very much making a name for themselves in America at the moment, um, and hopefully we get some of their own beer over here in Europe at some point too. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about them. If you want to learn a little bit more, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. And of course, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and that'll keep you up to date with all the latest goings on at the brewery as well. As I mentioned at the start of the video, the link to Shiosk, which is the beer shop I use in Copenhagen all the time, that's in the, uh, the video description as well. So yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. Then we can get rid of the brewery notes now. And you can see the ca this can is a little bit shiny, so it's a bit difficult for you with this camera to see the artwork because of the shadows and things. Maybe if I put this down a little bit, nah, it doesn't make much of a difference. But yeah, I'll just let you have a little quick look at the artwork then. The artwork, as always, from uh, Kings County Brewers Collective is, is you know, from uh, from Amundsen Brewery and Kings County Brewers Collective, it is pretty good. I did have a look at some of the Kings County Brewers labels and they do seem to be pretty nice as well. But yeah, this is a lovely, lovely looking beer, this one. And as I say, I think this is a reference to the Rainbow Highway from um, up in Asgard as well. But like I say, this one is an 8% double IPA. Um, it says on the side here, another day, another collab. This time we teamed up with our friends from New York City. Since we both share a huge passion for hoppy beers, we couldn't he uh, help but to make one doubled up with some peach and apricot. Uh, this double dry hopped double IPA is loaded with a generous dry hopping cram out full of some of the hoppy goodness we all love so much. Tropical, dank and juicy. So yeah, they've put some peaches and apricot in here by the sounds of it. And they've also put a little bit of, um, you know, some of the hops that we always enjoy. So yeah, let's get this guy out then and we will get on with the tasting. This is one of these cans, of course, where you're actually supposed to drink it from the can. You know, it's one of these ones with the tops like this. But yeah, it looks very, very nice. As I say, but let's get it out and into the glass. You know, when you do a beer review, you have to, um, you know, drink it out of the glass. Although, as I say, these cans are designed primarily to drink out of. But yeah, we've still got, ah, oh, we've only got a little bit left in there. I could put it all in, but that's not such a good idea. But um, yeah, as you can see, there was about a half finger of a, a quite a bumpy white head on this one. That is one of the things I have found with the Amundsen beers. The heads aren't so frothy in, uh, in my experience. They always are just that little bit bumpy. But you can see this is poured. If I hold this up to the light, this is a lovely, very hazy um, yellow colour. Um, it's not even a, a slight hint orange. This is definitely yellow. If I put my hand, my fingers behind the glass, you can see this one is pretty much completely hazy. But you know, in terms of its appearance, since it's a, a New England double IPA, you know, not really a surprise. And one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, and a few little ones just heading up towards the uh, the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, it does look um, really pretty damn nice, I have to say. And you can smell some of these lovely, fruity, juicy aromas coming off this beer too. So let's have a look at the aroma and just see how we get on then. Yeah. I tell you something, you really can smell the apricots in this one. Was it peaches they said they put in here as well? Um, Peaches and yeah, peaches. You can smell some of that lovely kind of peachy quality as well. The peaches are just a little bit sharper, I think, in comparison with the um, the apricots. But you can really smell them just at the top of the nose. They're, they come out. The peaches, I think, come out a little bit more towards the um, 
the front of the nose, whereas the apricots are a little bit more juicy and kind of reserved, if you like. But you can smell some of the hops as well. I would think they've maybe used a little bit of a kind of um, citra in this one, which would be quite nice. Um, you can definitely smell there's a little touch of a mango underneath the juicy fruits. The juicy, the, the actual fruits that they've added to the beer are definitely coming out a little bit more. They're a little bit more forward, if you like, than the hoppy side of this beer. But you've got a nice mangoey back note in there. I think there's a little touch of a, a kind of... I want to say there's a little touch of an orangey tangerine note in there. They could have maybe used mosaic. Yeah, I think that, I think this beer, to be honest, might have a citra and a mosaic background to it. I might be wrong right enough. Yeah, it's possible to be wrong. It could also be, you know, there could maybe be a little bit of Galaxy or Simcoe in there. There's, there's something in my mind that makes me want to see a little bit of passion fruit, but I think that's less likely, quite a bit less likely actually, than um, it being Citra and Galaxy. And this one, I'm definitely picking up a little bit of the mango and a little bit of the, the tangerines that you would expect from those two hops. You can also pick out, there's almost a little touch of a kind of lychee um, note to this one. But, um, yeah, it's it's interesting that, actually. It's really kind of strange how you pick up all these different fruits. But as I say, the peaches and the apricots are really coming to the fore in this one. It really um, it really smells like a fruit IPA, this beer, rather than it being, you know, a kind of straight-up double IPA. Although they do say on the can that they add fruit to this one. Um, so, yeah, I guess technically it's probably fair to say that this one is a fruit uh, double IPA rather than a... Uh, you know, a straight up double IPA if that makes sense. On the green side of the hops, I would say this one leans more towards the, the grassy side of things, although in fairness you do pick up a little bit of a floral quality to it, but to me the green aspects are definitely more grassy rather than anything else. But remember, if you add fruit to a, a beer like this, it definitely suppresses a little bit of the IBU in terms of the flavour. The, the, if they add fruit to the beer, it always takes away from some of the grassy and floral qualities around the edge of your tongue and you get the juicy fruit kind of just replacing that a little bit. In terms of the malt base, I would say this one is, um, you know, yeah, this one, you can definitely smell there's a little bit of that lactosey note in here. Um, it does have a little bit of a kind of milkshake IPA type quality to it, and in fairness, that actually suits the peaches and the apricots. That, I think, is what's pushing some of the, the peachy and apricot notes out of this beer. But you also get a little bit of the kind of oaty creaminess in there as well, and the wheaty, white, bready smoothness, but mainly it does smell a little bit like a milkshake IPA, this one. It actually does remind me a little bit of the... Um, some of the things that I've had from Ale Farm recently, you know, they've been having these really nice kind of milkshakey IPAs, to be honest, which are, uh, well, I don't think they're actually intended as milkshake IPAs, but in my mind, they really do come off in terms of the flavour profile as being milkshake IPAs. But yeah, this is a really, really nice, um, nice smelling beer, this one. So as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But let's have a taste of this one then. So this one, it's the Technicolor Highway, a double IPA with peaches and apricots added to it from Amundsen Brewery in Oslo in Norway, a collaboration beer with um, Kings County Brewers Collective from Brooklyn over in New York. And as I say, very shiny artwork on this one, so you can't see this beer so well on the camera. I thought it was just the light from my computer when I've got the brewery notes up, but apparently not. So yeah, but yeah, let's get stuck into this beer then. Slange Skull. Yeah, that one I have to say is quite nice. It's got a little bit of a kick to it in the beginning, which again is really really nice. Um, the malt base on this one is uh, is very very smooth as well. Um, it, this is a really interesting one. This one's definitely got a little bit of punch to it, which I, I do quite like. I remember the um, some of these Amundsen beers being you know quite hefty with their alcohol. This one to me, it seems to be that they've managed to find a way to cover that a little bit better. You know, I'm saying that, but there wasn't really a problem uh, for that with Amundsen Brewery before, in my opinion, but this one I just think is slightly better at covering the alcohol content than I remember them being before. I've always said when it comes to these New England um, IPAs and stuff like that, I think when you start to get to 8%, that's when you find it difficult to, to cover the alcohol, to be honest with you. Um, although there are exceptions to that rule, of course, Steve Berriots, for example, did a big 11% triple IPA, I remember, for the, for one of the, what do you call it, for one of the, the Copenhagen beer celebrations, and that was really nice, I have to say. But yeah, this I have to say, is really quite nicely done. So let's try and break this uh, this flavour down a little bit then. So 
middle of your palate, you can feel that nice wheaty white bready quality just blanketing the middle of your palate. Um, on top of that, you can pick out the oaty creaminess. And the further you go into the flavour, the more of these lactosey notes start to push their way out as well. But then the, the, it's almost just like the malt base in the middle of your palate dries out a little bit. And you start to get more of these kind of um, grainy aspects coming out of the beer too, which is interesting. And the thing that's really striking me about this one is just how juicy it is. It's got a lovely smoothness to the the um, the mouthfeel, but just towards the front of the palate, you really get this. It's got a big blast of juice in it. This one, which is um, which is really nice actually. I like that about this beer. This is definitely different from the other ones I've had from Amundsen before. I mean, I've had like the likes of Space Tiger and uh, and things like that. So to have this one. Um, with a slightly different take on it is really nice. You always want them to try and experiment a little bit and try different things, and you know they certainly are doing that. But I like how this, uh, you know, this all goes together. So yeah, the middle of the palate is really nice. In the very centre of your palate, there's maybe a little touch of a biscuity sweetness, which is is which I do like as well. You always need a little bit of sweetness in there with the New England IPAs, in my mind just to balance out that smoothness a little bit. Um, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, there's a little touch of, uh, of earthiness there, and again, that's making me wonder if they've used a bit of mosaic in here. Mosaic gives you this this distinctive little touch of earthiness in the back corners of your palate, which is nice. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, that smooths out a little bit, and then as you get further forward to the uh, the front corners of the palate, you get a nice kind of floral aromatic spiciness there. And then as you go round the front curve of the palate, you can detect that there's a little bit of a um, you can detect that there's a little touch of uh, a, a, just a lighter sort of grassy note to the beer. Let's get the last bit of this in and just see how that affects the beer. I'm curious about this one as well because, like I was saying, normally when you add fruit to a beer, um. You know, it, it suppresses a little bit of the IBU. Um, I've always found that it takes away a little bit of some of the green aspects of the hop. Um, but this is interesting because the green aspects of the hop um, really do come out on the edges of your tongue here, which is, is quite nice. Um, and I'm just, I was wondering that, I was like, did they actually add, have I just misread that or something? But it does say on the can that they've added peaches and apricot to the beer, um, but it doesn't seem to come out so much on and suppress the green side of the hops. But yeah, this is definitely um, a nice beer. I mean, it's got everything you'd expect from the New England base. But where this one for me really kind of shines is the the fruity side of it. It's the fruity side of things that's quite different. Um, and really, again, I'm starting to get more and more of the peachy and apricotty um, notes out of this beer. The peaches and apricots are lining the tongue a little bit, but it's interesting, as I mentioned, because it's not suppressing the, the green side of the hops in the way that it kind of normally would. Um, around the, the further into the aftertaste you go, you can feel it just pushing out from the the uh, the green side of things, which is, it, you can really feel the fruity qualities just pushing their way out a little bit more, but um, it doesn't, you know, you still get that nice kind of hoppy bite from this beer. So they've done a really good job to balance that, I think, actually. This one, for me, has turned out very, very nice. Um, in terms of the fruity side of things from the hops, though, you've got a nice oily bubble where that juicy, um, those juicy fruity esters come out from the hops. For me, there's a little element of a kind of passion fruitier uh, note to this, or maybe even grapefruit. I'm pretty sure they've used a bit of citra in here because you can feel there's that little bit of grapefruit just towards the back of the oily bubble. In front of that, you've got the nice, um, you've got the nice sort of mangoey notes, um, and then just even if you come even further forward than that, you've got a little bit of this kind of tangerine orange quality to the beer too. And if you go just behind the front curve of the palate, you've got a nice kind of um, light sort of lychee-ish, um, almost. Well, I think I'd say it's more of a lychee kind of lime sort of combination. And that's some of the complexities that you can get from the citron. For me, right on the tip of the tongue, there's just a little bit of uh, of blueberry in there, which again makes me think uh, mosaic. I think it's citron mosaic that they've used in this one. I may well be wrong. There could be a little bit of garlic or something like that in here, but I heavily suspect that it's citron mosaic. You know, it's two classic hops that work really damn well. 
in um, in IPAs together, and I think they've done a, a really solid job of this one. The way that the peachy and the apricot flavours come out in this beer on the edge of the tongue is very nice, and it complements the malt base well as well. So this one has a little bit of that aspect of the milkshake IPAs to it, but the malt base itself is is very smooth, and it does get just a little touch grainy the further into the aftertaste you go. But this is quite a complex double IPA. This one, there's quite a lot you can see about this beer, but it certainly works out. Um, really nicely in my mind and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. It's got a little bit, the way that the juicy fruitiness comes out of this beer as well is really quite interesting. Mm. Yeah, I, I like this. Wouldn't hesitate to drink that again actually. So yeah, in terms of the um, the mouthfeel of this beer then, to me this one's definitely mid-bodied. Carbonation's pretty smooth, you've got a nice smoothness to it. It's also got a bit of wetness to the mouthfeel as well which I quite like. Um, the further that you go into the, the aftertaste, this beer really does smooth out. You've got a really nice juicy quality. It's also got a little bit of sharpness to it actually. There's a good balance between a, a kind of sharper um, and more juicy fruity quality to the beer which is which is interesting. The way the fruits come out as I mentioned is really quite nice. Um, the malt base as I mentioned earlier has a is mainly quite smooth. There's a little touch of sweetness to it, a little bit of biscuit malt in the middle of your palate and the hoppiness is, is good too. I mean I think you're going to get about 25-ish IBUs out of this beer and the interesting point about that is the, the fruit doesn't seem to uh, to kind of suppress the, the green side of the hops in the ways that you might get with some other beers. But the main point to take away from this one is that it is very nice. If we're saying this beer is a fruit IPA or a regular IPA, it actually it is a fruit IPA technically, but it leans more towards the kind of regular double IPA side of things. But the main point to take away is that this is a lovely, lovely beer. And, uh, you know, if you like the Amundsen beers, you're certainly not going to be disappointed with this one. And I do hope that I can try some of the Kings County Brewer Collector's own beers at some point in the future. That would be pretty awesome. At 8% too, this one covers its alcohol very, very well. And I found it from previous experiences that when you get to that kind of level of ABV with these beers, sometimes you can feel a little bit of alcohol warmth with them. But this one certainly covers it very, very well. It's a little bit dangerous, this, actually, because you it is difficult to tell um, what ABV it is, but you know, it's all part of the fun, I would say, with these uh, New England IPAs. But yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one's the Technicolor Highway, a double IPA from Amundsen Bravery with, uh, sorry, I should say a, a double IPA with peaches and apricots from Amundsen Bravery in Oslo in Norway and Kings County Brewers Collective in Brooklyn over in New York. A lovely beer, this one with some awesome artwork, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. If you like the beers that Amundsen put out, like Space Tiger and things, then I think this is another one that has a slightly different um, edge to it. Definitely a little bit more sharper and fruity, I think, compared to some of the other ones. But a lovely beer and one that I definitely think you should try for yourself. But yeah, let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Amundsen and KCBC. And uh, I will catch you guys very, very soon. Make sure you check out my social media and have a go at the Technicolor Highway. And hail Odin for the Brit, or hail Heimdall it should be, for the Rainbow Bridge. Slanja, Skull.